Chris Gethard here, welcome to CGP. I wanted to tell you about this night that I distinctly remember a few years back when I bombed hard at Stand Up New York, which happens, that's the thing, I bomb a lot, everybody does, it's a great club, Stand Up New York, but it doesn't always feel good to go all the way up to 78th Street just to bomb. But luckily that night was not a total waste because that was the night I met Leah Bonham. And right away, right out of the gate, I knew she was kind and funny, but also instantly created this feeling, I sense, that she was living in a very specific, funny world with her own perspective. I was instantly intrigued by this person, and every time we have uh, met since, it has proven to be a valid thought. I think you will be intrigued, too. Luckily for all of us, Leah has an obsession. It's very specific, it's odd, it's gonna show you everything I think is magical about her and strange and hilarious inside her brain. People of the world, my name is Chris Gethard, but this is not the Chris Gethard Show. This is the Leah Bonama Show. Oh my God. Oh my God. Thank you so much. Welcome to Hard Read. Hard like dick. Yes. My name is Leah Bonama, and I am your host for this evening on Chris Gethard Presents. Round of applause for Chris. Thank you so much. Thank you. I wasn't ready for such a touching intro from Chris, so I'm just gonna take a little second to get emotional. I do remember when we first met, I think we both had diarrhea. Um, and we bonded over stomach problems, so that was delightful. And I'm very excited tonight, we're gonna be doing a bodice ripper book club, right? My mom calls them bodice rippers because it's so erotic that you just bust right out of your shirt, just heaving nipples, and... <laughs> I'm so excited. I'll just give you a rundown of the show so you know what's going on. Um, I'm gonna give you a little intro into how I got into this. Because uh, uh, not my normal, I'm a Lord of the Rings fan, uh, so I'm far walk from there. And then we're gonna have a great panel discussion. Then we're gonna have people call in, and that call in number is 212-757-1393. If you guys are here, so you don't have to call in. <laughs> And then we're gonna close it out with a sketch. Um, and I'm hoping that Karen Robards, who is the author of the book we're gonna be talking about, The Last Victim, is at home watching and deciding to be my best friend in the whole world, Karen Robards. <laughs> <laughs> you and Kurt Vonnegut are my two favorite authors. <laughs> Please be my friend. <laughs> I bet she has a house with like a big window that you look outside on green grass and you have like a lovely Diet Coke. Um, <laughs> so I used to be very against, I call it dirty books or fuck books, whatever you want to call them. I thought, anytime I heard about them, they seemed like the Cinderella story, you know what I mean? Very heteronormative, gender roles, and I was kind of snotty about it. I'd never read any, but I judged them. Um, I don't need facts to have opinions. <laughs> I'm American, yeah. <laughs> but like when Fifty Shades of Grey came out, I had, one of my friends was trying to push it on me and she told me about the premise. I was like, oh, this is the Cinderella story, right? Except now instead of glass slippers, she has a ball gag, <laughs> right? Instead of a, she doesn't turn into a pumpkin and it gets shoved up her bum. Um, right, but this, it's, it's always a rich guy. We always have like the quintessential rich guy, which, can't we do better than that with our fantasy man? Like, my fantasy man is Gandalf. <laughs> right from Lord of the Rings. Favorite moment, I think, sums up his character. He says, I have some stuff I have to do. I'm paraphrasing. <laughs> <laughs> some stuff I have to do. I'll be back in five days at dawn from the east. And then he shows up five days later at dawn from the east. You're like, that's a fucking man. <laughs> Shows up when he said he was gonna. Right, I'll take Fifty Shades of Gandalf the Grey. That's what I would like. Right, and then the girl in Fifty Shades of Grey is a virgin in America. <laughs> in her 20s. So I was like, was she raised in a well? Where do we find this woman? What, obviously everybody loses their virginity when they're, you're ready, but if you start reading these books, they're all virgins. And I'm like, where is this town of women <laughs> who are like virgins and then guys just show up and uh, pound them? You know what I mean? This is crazy. 
And this is the part that bothers me. So this girl meets this rich guy, and I don't mean like dental plan rich either, which <laughs> I think we can all agree is rich. Um, <laughs> if you can get out of both sides of your bed, that is, you're loaded. Um, my bed touches three out of the four walls in my bedroom. <laughs> That's a call for help. I, so he, she meets this rich guy, they have sex, and the first time she has sex in her entire life, she has an orgasm. <laughs> I was like, is this a science fiction novel? <laughs> right, that's what I made me so angry because it's, I feel like it's like so, these are supposed to be sex books for women, and then you're gonna read something that hardly ever happens to a woman the first time? What are you talking about? You gotta put some time in, do some solo flights, figure your shit out. <laughs> and then you start popping them off, you know what I mean? My first time was like Fifty Shades of a Panic Attack. <laughs> it was all these thoughts running through my mind, none of them sexy, right? If you did a voiceover to my first time, it was like, um, what is that noise? <laughs> Why does it sound like we're walking in a mud puddle? <laughs> Oh my God, is that the sound of my fat slapping? I don't want to listen to my fat slap. Why does it feel like my organs are being moved? Are my organs being moved right now? I think his dick is in my kidney. Is it possible his dick is in my kidney? I don't think I can ask, that seems rude. You know, I'm just gonna Google it. I'll Google it later. What would I Google? Would I Google dick kidney or there's a kidney in my dick? I'm not sure. Oh my God, is there a fart button in there? Cause it feels like he's pushing on a fart button. Am I gonna fart in the middle of this? Oh my God, if I fart, I'll cough over it. I'm just gonna cough over it. I'll just be like, <laughs> you don't hear anything. You don't hear anything. Am I peeing? Is that a pee feeling? Could I pee in the middle of this? Oh my God, could he pee? Could he pee? Because I think they only have one hole. Don't they only have one hole? Was I supposed to ask first? Is that the polite thing to do? Like when you go on a road trip, you say, make sure you pee before you get in. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Carla. It's Charles. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you guys. You guys. So that was my stance. I was like, not having it. And then this is what happened. My gateway book. I'm at St. Louis, the airport. <laughs> Are you from St. Louis? You did this to me. <laughs> I'm in St. Louis, and I was at the Hudson News in your airport. Maybe you've been there. I walked in and I had enough money to get a down payment for an apartment and instead I got a bag of cashew nuts. <laughs> they were three million dollars. And there was a book in the, th it was in the thriller section, right, with your Sanfords, you know what I mean, and your Patricia Cromwells, and I hadn't read it yet. I'd read most of the other books and I was like, yes, because it was about a lady who profiled serial killers for the FBI. That was my takeaway from the cover. That's all I got, I buy the book. It's by Karen Robards, who you may have heard I love. <laughs> I didn't at this time know her. I start reading it. She starts seeing ghosts. I close the book. <laughs> I don't do ghosts. I don't know about you guys. I just don't want to risk it. You know what I mean? <laughs> I feel like we don't have any hard facts. I don't want to. Can you imagine you open a portal and then you have a ghost living in your one room apartment in New York? I'd be like, no, there's no room. <laughs> But then I was like, you know what, I own the book, I should support this author. So I open it back up, she sees a hot ghost. I'm pretty sure the line is, he was as evil as he was hot. <laughs> and I was like, what is going on in here? First off, I've never even imagined a ghost fully formed. I don't know how you guys, when you see ghosts in your head, like you see feet, you know what I mean? That's crazy. <laughs> And then they started talking about how good looking this ghost was and I, I mean, it hit me like, wh what? <laughs> like when I first learned about central air. Do you guys remember when you found out that people had central air? I was like, are you kidding me? I was like, is this lady gonna fuck this ghost? And I was like, oh shit, she's gonna fuck a ghost! And then it was the best book I've ever read in my whole life. And I have now read every one of Karen Robard's books. She's read, uh, actually no, she has a new one out. It's in the Bianca St. Ives series, which is a CIA series. That's her code name. And I love them all very much, but this was the first book I ever read. And that is what we were going to talk about tonight. Last Victim by Karen Robards. And with that, I am gonna introduce your panel. Woo! <laughs> Uh. 
That is the sound of the moaning lady, <laughs> signifying that it's a segment change and that it may or may not be me. <laughs> First up, we have Kenise Mobley, everybody. <laughs> Kenise is the host of Love About Town podcast. She's the co-host of The Pasta Show in Brooklyn. And she is the only comic friend of mine who comes up to me after, I do jokes now about all these books I read. She comes up to me and is like, hey, tell me about that book. I'd love to hear about it and read it. So I love Kenise and her enthusiasm. Round of applause for Kenise. <laughs> Up next, we have Kendra Cunningham. Kendra has a comedy album called Blonde Logic, available on iTunes, and she also has a comedy special on Dry Bar. She is the co-writer and co-star of a short that we're going to be playing at the end of the show. And Kendra is my comic friend who is most likely to actually come over for a sleepover. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Kendra. Well, obviously, I made everybody wear sleepover clothes because in my <laughs> dream America, everybody's sleeping over at everybody's houses reading dirty books together. <laughs> Up next, we have Aparna Nancherla. <laughs> Aparna has a half hour Netflix comedy special on the stand ups. She co-hosts Butterboy every Monday at Littlefield, and she is my comic friend who I am most likely to have pie with in Los Angeles while we discuss internet trolls. <laughs> Round of applause, welcome Aparna. <laughs> Up next we have Charles McBee, Charles. <laughs> Charles is the host of Black Twitter Talk podcast. He runs a live show called The United States of Outrage, and he is my comic friend that I most like to perform at. I, we've performed at a lot of casinos together and have uh, coinciding panic attacks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Round of applause for Charles. <laughs> and closing out our amazing panel, we have Corinne Fisher. Round of applause for Corinne. <laughs> She is the co-host of Guys We Fucked podcast. She is the director of The Dons, the sketch you're gonna see at the end. And she is the comic I am most likely to leave a stand-up show with and end up walking across the entire city while we discuss elections and facials. <laughs> Very important topic. So, welcome, Corinne. You wanna take my own? Now we're gonna talk about the book! Talk about the book! Talk about the book! Woo! 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 Yes! We're in it! Karen Robards. Uh, I think up top, if anybody, you guys want to just shout out, I don't even know who wants to go first. I'm sure everybody has things they want to say. I'm just enjoying your shuffle. <laughs> oh, you didn't know you guys weren't ready? I have my glasses, that's what that is, in case we get serious. <laughs> Um, everybody took notes, so I feel pretty yep. amazing. <laughs> Bad boys, they always come out on top. <laughs> no matter what, dead or alive, they always oh, come yeah. out on top. <laughs> oh, nice young man, FBI agent, just wanting to take her out for a nice, like, no, there's a dead guy that might be in here watching ESPN. I'm gonna go chill with him for <laughs> like, Tony was so boring, though. See? But I think he was mainly boring because he wasn't dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we should mention that the dead guy was also a serial killer. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. That um, he killed seven women. Yes. <laughs> yes. Which uh, makes him so bad. Yeah, but he is so good. seven times as bad. <laughs> so he's like, but wrongly I can change accused, him. though. He is? He's saying he's wrongly accused. He's saying, they, yeah. they all say that. Yeah. 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 Well, I've read That's the whole just, series, yeah. so I'm not going to give anything away. <laughs> oh, so like he they, was wrong. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They go back and like, DNA testing wasn't good in 2012. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like the prison system does incarcerate large white men at high <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I know, he really was described like as a, a, what's his name, Channing Tatum? Like type of character, this ghost man who was very sexual. <laughs> 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 there were multiple dance scenes. There were. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there were. Yeah. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was a very gentle lover. 
um, from from her description, I thought. You know, he really took his time, uh, which is nice. He's very sweet of him. Yeah, yeah. he's kind of old-fashioned. Didn't he um, make her ask him for consent? Yes. It yeah. was yeah. very progressive. Yeah. <laughs> Is that like some kind of like a Beetlejuice rule? Yeah. Like you have to lure him in from the yeah. Netherlands? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Bloody so. Mary? <laughs> That's right. But they didn't have sex till, what was it, page 200 and... Yeah, like, it was like the end of the book. There wasn't any sex at all until chapter 21. Yeah. I think it's page 230. And I was just like... <laughs> <laughs> I heard this was a sexy a ghost doctor. story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, you have to wait for you it. You do. Yeah. You know it's coming, though. It's like boiling. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because she says he's hot. So many times. Yeah, many times. Just, oh yeah, yeah this guy. Or, uh, one of the other detectives who's working this serial killer case, uh, she catches a glimpse of him because he's able to materialize for moments. Uh, <laughs> and even this is true. even then, that detective who has no context with the person at all is like, "Yeah, did you see that guy? He was naked and super hot." <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, that's important to know. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. yeah. they didn't. Yeah, because they didn't have sex for a while, but he got butt ass pretty early. Yeah, in the story. yeah. <laughs> he was walking around. He, he was like, "Oh, yeah. I was in the water." And, oh. <laughs> Well, she gets naked, and she's showering, and he shows up in the bathroom, and they talk about her landing strip. Yeah. Yes. Oh, there was a line about that that was real weird. <laughs> <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta pull it up really it's quick. Oh. Sorry, I was just gonna say, by the way, she was his psychiatrist in the prison before he got Oh, shanked. yeah, you guys may not have the yeah, full yeah. backstory. Yeah. I assumed you all yeah, read yeah. it. You probably, you probably um, haven't read the book. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so the yeah. dead guy's named Michael yeah. Garland, and the alive guy's named Tony Bartoli, and he yeah. works for the FBI, and he's a very nice man, but he's no dead Boring. Michael Garland. <laughs> <laughs> and so she Boring. sees recently dead, recently violently de dead dead people. So Michael died right in front of her, and then he was stuck to her. <gasps> yeah. Talking about violently lead dead people, they were murdered. Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't see people that just died nicely. Yeah. They don't come to her. You love, you or just come love on the ghost her. so much. I do love You're like, no, he, they just died violently, but like, yeah, he murdered them, but it's like not a big deal, I can see past it. I, I believe that he's innocent. <laughs> <laughs> but you've read all four. Yeah, but even before I read all four, I believed like he was in it. I mean, she does. They their relationship takes place in this book over the course of five days. Yeah. Yes. She becomes cool with the fact that he murdered seven women in like two days. In like two or three days. Yeah. She's like, okay. I mean, but did he? That thing was real good. So I didn't get it. <laughs> But like in Brokeback Mountain, like don't they like turn gay from not being gay like within like three hours? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I got from it. Like some of them, they went on that mountain, like not everyone was fully gay. And then by the end of it, I was like, whoa, that took a turn fast. <laughs> like I love it, but I liked it. <laughs> Do you not remember that? I watched it. I just remember, well, I actually don't remember how the beginning happened at all. <laughs> well, I mean, they just, they, 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 it's not really understand, and they start fucking real fast. Like, their wives, like, because, like, Michelle Williams is, like, waving through the screen door, and then they get, like, they take a wrong turn, and it gets dark, and then they fuck in a tent. Like, that's how I remember. <laughs> I think it was very like, really cold. Quick. I think that, that that was, like, it was cold or something, and they were like, oh, no, we gotta. Right. And yeah. I think they were both yeah. like, yeah. we're both so hot. Right. <laughs> we well, should be fucking. you're pleasure, and I'm Jake Jill hot. Yeah, we're fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we not doing that? Okay, I found a description of uh, Charlie's body. She had a good body, slim and tight, and long legged with breasts that might have been on the small side but were perky and well shaped, and a well groomed strip of pubic hair in the usual place. <laughs> She wanted to make sure you knew that it was in the right place. <laughs> Where is she's kind of kooky. You know, the you. <laughs> okay. Uh, like, why did she no, say I, mean, I think you should read the rest of that. This was actually one of the quotes. Aparna and I are on the same page. It is? What was the rest of the quote? Um, it really, it's, uh, I called it the panty saga. <laughs> page 86. Uh, we're in the usual place. Is Okay. <laughs> This is where you're like, oh, Karen Robards is funny. I really <laughs> like her. So in the usual place, then it says, his gaze didn't skip an inch of her, and the carnal glint, it, this is when you first realize, 
oh, they're gonna fuck. <laughs> and the carnal glint in his sky blue eyes as he looked sent a rush of alarmed adrenaline pumping through her veins. Smoke and bad doc, he drawled. <laughs> bad enough, this is my favorite sentence in the whole book. Bad enough that she was plagued by ghosts, but horny homicidal ghosts? <laughs> <laughs> it was too much. <laughs> Charlie it was saw red. Too much. <laughs> How can that not be the best thing you've ever done? <laughs> Honestly, Karen Robards has gotten me through so many bad subway rides. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. When you're on like the E train and they're like, well, you live here now. <laughs> and it's me and Robards. <laughs> I'm so glad you also liked that oh, sentence. Oh, yeah. I don't know, you might have not said liked it, but I changed that. <laughs> More she alarmed her. She remembered it. <laughs> oh, Kenise brought something up upstairs about the underwear. Yes, they <laughs> describe her underwear in excessive detail <laughs> over and over and over again. Like, the landing strip thing was like, oh, this is a sex book, okay. Uh, up until then, it could be just like a normal detective novel. Yeah. Then they mention her landing strip, and I'm like, they don't just do that for any old detective story. <laughs> <laughs> then they get into like, Oh, she was going to bed, and she was wearing specifically, it's blue, it's see-through, there's a silk trim around the side, the bottoms are lace, just in case. You were like, I can't picture it. I need you to, I need you to tell me exactly what this underwear looks like. And they do it again and again and again. I, I love that about Karen. Um, <laughs> across the board, all of her books, very heavily underwear. Uh, details, all of them. It does seem like she's thinking ahead about like a fashion crossover with like, yeah. Target <laughs> lingerie. That's so true. Yeah. You're like, I already see it. Yeah. yeah. I would buy her line. Yeah. You, you know every nook and cranny of Garland in this book. <laughs> I mean, I was like, okay, I could like sculpt this dude out. Yeah. Yes. Like blind if I needed to by now. His every peck, every muscle. Yeah. I was like, all right, we're gonna yeah. know. This dude. <laughs> and then did, one of her lines was like, I think she said, yes, right here. I, I underlined it. Oh, yeah. Of course he would be totally hung. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Of course. Why would I, I, it of sounds course. like a, it almost sounds like she pops out a character at some places where she <laughs> added in a like she got one of her dirty girlfriends to come over and add some lines in. You know what I mean? You know, it's fun because she goes from like like words you would use in a book to like just full on text. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah, she, she pops around. Yeah, no, she has the details uh, of Dickens, but not the skills. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry, Leah. Yeah. Well, she, I, she does have the skills. She just does it in she's a different way. It. She's hiding yeah. it. She's waiting till book forty five. <laughs> She, yeah. she does a lot of, um, talks about a lot about lightning. And yeah, a lot of lightning. When, she, when her characters are getting ready to go, their bones melt. So that's how you know. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of bone melting. Yes. And uh, I love her penis descriptions <laughs> because it's always hard like steel, mm -hmm. but soft like, like velvet. velvet on the outside. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty good. Right? Accurate. Yeah. It's really yeah. accurate. It's yeah. lovely. Mind you, they're still looking for this girl that's like kidnapped. Yes. <laughs> Don't they find her body and then they're like, now we can do it. Yeah. Yeah. They find now the body that she's and then... dead. Like, there's like murders each time they have sex, though. Yeah. yeah. It's like, maybe, you, maybe you should stop fucking this ghost yeah. because clearly it's not working out for anybody else. Right. <laughs> Even at the top of your game, women can't see red flags. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's like multiple murders happening throughout the book, which is why it's such a page turner. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, and, and she's fucking a ghost. There's everything. Yeah, so t when you explained the book to me before I read it, you were just like, yeah, she fucks a ghost, that's what you led with. And then I start reading it, and it mo like the first yeah. 200 pages, like brutal murders. <laughs> and I kept waiting for the, the sex, and it took a long time <laughs> to get there. Well, this, was first, this was my first. This was my first sex book. Now I read ones where they start much earlier. But um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> That's me. Hi, everybody. It's me again. It's Chris. I have to say, I am very, very confused and terrified and weirdly aroused by this episode thus far. 
thank you, Leah, so much for doing it. I do not want to interrupt the discussions of ghost literature, but I want to let you know that next week I will be here hosting CGP personally because it's our 10th episode. We've got to clear the air. As I'm sure everybody knows, uh, when they agreed to let us do CGP, MNN was nice enough. They gave us the entire ninth floor of MNN Tower to serve as our offices. <laughs> and all the people you've been seeing host and appear on the show throughout the months, everybody has a cubicle and everybody's been hearing the rumors. I've been seeing it online. A lot of drama, gamesmanship, backstabbing, politicking all over that office. So <laughs> it's getting nasty. I've set up an anonymous complaint box at the CGP office and all sorts of hosts who have hosted before are coming back airing their grievances with each other face to face before your very eyes live on TV. Don't miss it. I'm going to make Martin Urbano and Carmen Christopher fight. Back to you, Leah. So I think we're going to take some calls. Um, do we also want to maybe throw up a quote? So we have if people want to talk about a quote if they, they get lost on the calls. Because I want to have one of my favorite quotes up there. Um, should we go with a hard quote? <laughs> um, let's do, uh, let's do page, oh, let's do page 330. Um, I just want to, let's really just read this and then we'll take a call. I hope my mom's not watching. The, uh, this is when you're like, oh. It's happening. <laughs> and it took until page 3.30. And then you're like, I bet she's going to get a UTI. Um, <laughs> the urgency of his arousal was impossible to mistake. The sexual charge he gave off was as electric as lightning that flashed through the night outside. He kissed her breathless, kissed her stupid, kissed her until her heart pounded and her blood raced and her body melted. What? I'm going to skip through the middle, and I'm gonna, we close with, she was so bedazzled by lust. <laughs> mm. <Yeah. laughs> I legit thought she just had, like, diamonds I in the middle. That's I mean, bedazzled. So oh, but that's <laughs> <laughs> close. You were close. You were close. Oh, we have a call. Uh-oh. Uh, Emily in San Francisco. Uh, hi. Hi, Emily. Are you? How are you? Uh, I'm good. I really enjoyed the book. Oh, I'm so Yay. glad. So glad. <laughs> wow. Yes, reading. Had you read it before, or did you just hear about it through Chris Gethard? <laughs> uh, just for just for this. <laughs> Chris is starting a whole new Robards fan. <laughs> oh, I'm looking over here. What, so what are your thoughts, Emily? Um, I was concerned because I don't usually read, I mean, like you said, like romance books. Um, but there was enough, like, rules to the strange fantasy and afterlife that they created to keep me pretty interested and I heard that in a later book, there's ghost court of sorts, and that <laughs> makes me want to read all of them, because, like, what? <laughs> You're going to want to read all of them. <laughs> it gets breathless. <laughs> Honestly, we give you all four of them. I'm rereading the whole series right now. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> is it like a ghost small claims court? Or like, what is yeah, it? Yeah, that's what I want to know. <laughs> Thank you so much for calling in, Emily. I'm so glad you liked it. Thank you so much. We're going we're gonna to have to have a book club, all of us, and read them all. <laughs> uh, oh, we have a ghost calling in. Uh, <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. This is the last girl I Ooh. 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 It says Ghost is it New York. A, is it a naked ghost? <laughs> oh. um, ghost on line three. How are you? <gasps> oh, that was spooky. Oh, man. <laughs> I think that was just the microphone. OK, we lost the ghost. <laughs> I'm sure it's very hard to make those cell phone connections. Well, that's the anticipation of like one of those ghost shows, and they're like, after the commercial, we'll see what that sound was, and then it was just like a technical thing. <laughs> <laughs> but we do have Kathy. Carly. Carly. Carly, I don't have my glasses on, so that wasn't anything 
personal. I apologize. I can't hear you. Let me do it again. <laughs> <laughs> we have Carly in Wisconsin. You can't see her. She can't hear you. It's fine. <laughs> Carly? Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> Thank oh, you for calling Finn. in. Sorry, I didn't realize you were talking to me. I am. <laughs> Hi. How are you? Good. How are you guys? Wonderful. Hey. Thanks for asking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to turn you on speaker. Is that way better? Sorry about that. Oh, no. No apologies. <laughs> What's yeah, that? I was just calling in because, like, I wanted to say hi to you guys. Hi, oh. you guys. Good. I hope you are good. <laughs> Did you eat that book? <laughs> Carly's under the what? Did you eat the book? Huh? Thanks, did you? Oh, did, yeah. Did you read the book, Carly? <laughs> Honestly, I did not. I called in on info. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Honesty. <laughs> That's a caller with principles right now. You know, I, as soon as someone says honestly, I knew what the answer was going to be no. <laughs> I, uh, well, we appreciate you calling anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for calling. We have somebody coming in from Salem, which is oh. very famous. Oh. Witch trials. The witch trials, not the cigarettes. Yes. Yeah. Sarah no, on line one. All the witches. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Are you guys ready to be spooktacular? Because this is a lot of ghost fucking. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, um, yeah, hit us. So with I, ha I have a question for you guys. Do you think that you have ever fucked a ghost on ass? <laughs> <laughs> It said in advance there was going to be somebody who called in and was like, okay, which one of you? Right. Has, has, uh, so I'm going to say no, but you guys, I don't think so. I mean, she, when she first fucks this ghost, does not know she has actually fucked a ghost. She thinks she simply dreamed and right. sex happened. But, I mean, I've had sexy dreams. Do you think it was possible they were a ghost? Like maybe our souls left our bodies, right? Like they do in this book. Our souls left our bodies, Ooh. and we are on some sort of soul plane and we were having sex, but they never mentioned it to me afterwards. So. <laughs> I mean, it's astral plane fucking at that point. Yes, <laughs> astral plane. Like, planes. it's another level. Because here's my theory. Okay. I mean, we talk about that stuff in Salem all the time. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. 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 So, there are tons of dead people in the world, right? <laughs> and, like, they're all just walking around. Yeah. Yeah. And, there's way more dead people than alive people, I think, maybe. I don't know. So where are all those ghosts hanging out? They're hanging out between us when we're fucking other people. And they're, like, getting in us. That's so I think we all probably fucked a ghost. That theory is sound. I mean, that is true. It's, there was that slow dance where the ghost... Uh, yes, it was, was in between them. the people. But they're only, like, a long in. Of a week, right? What's that? Like the soul, the, the souls that are just hanging out in this, according to the rules of this book, they're only around for a week. So oh, we only have to deal right. with like the dead people that died in the last week. No, but, but I think Sarah's saying it. right now, oh, in our all... life, outside of the Robards timeline. Right. They're just <laughs> yeah. ghosts everywhere. Yeah, if we it. take away that whole week rule, yeah. because that week rule, I mean, there's just not enough violently kill people for me to get my rocks off every day. <laughs> <laughs> but of the night. if we just imagine that they're everywhere and I'm like, I'm in Salem, so I'm fucking some like 1693 dudes. Oh, oh. like they would be so smelly. That's smelling. a lot of opportunity. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it does seem safer than condoms. <laughs> <laughs> they do definitely address what souls come. Yeah. I mean, could a person get pregnant? Is that the... Uh, like, astrally pregnant? I don't know. They don't talk about... They don't, I mean, if you had a baby, it, it, would it be a real-life baby or a ghost baby? And then who raises it? I mean, so is ghost I mean, sex who the always raises all the babies? <laughs> women. Yeah. That was why I was women. thinking of it. Yeah. I'm sure even in the ghost world, women have to be responsible. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take care of the baby. <laughs> Good question. Huh? Sarah's coming in solid. <laughs> oh, did we lose the top call, or was that call a joke? There was a Karen. Did you see that? 
Oh. 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 Kansas Kansas Kansas. Kansas. Is that is that Car can we try line two? <gasps> no, isn't she from Kansas? No, no she's, she's from Kentucky. Kentucky. She's from Kentucky. You're the one who told me she's from Kentucky. Oh, Thank yeah, you, Sarah. Right. Sorry. Oh, I think we all die right here. Next time we can have sex with me. What? I said I'll die right here if that's Karen Robards, and then someone can have sex with me. Yeah, but how would? Uh, <laughs> I like that you answered that like seriously, like the logistics wouldn't work. I'm gay friends. Wow. Wait, is she here? Uh, yeah, it's, let's, uh, I'm uh, Karen on line two. Hello? Uh, Hello? Hello? Maybe she has a man. Hello? Hello? Hello, is this Karen on line two? Yes, uh, I hear that you were discussing my book oh, on this show. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is... Let's do it. Let's do a Karen Robards test. If this is Karen Robards... Oh, oh. oh, yes. What does one of your detective characters in every single book say? Could, what do they compare dollars to? Child, you know how many books I have written? <laughs> 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 you do, right? She, you don't know how many exactly. you've read, because I've read them all. I, <laughs> but I appreciate it. <laughs> I would get very anxious that that was Karen, and that I somehow hurt Karen's feelings, but I feel like you would know that you say dollars to donuts, and <laughs> it's a very fun phrase. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. We're going to go to Matt in Albuquerque. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Um, I'm just kind of confused because I didn't see any of the stuff you guys are talking about in the, in the book I read. This, the one I read was more about uh, Robert Langdon and Sophie and they kind of didn't really have a relationship, but uh, they were solving a bunch of mysteries and stuff. <laughs> Which book did he read? So if you, I, there's, there is another title that comes up first on Amazon, no disrespect to Karen, um, called The Last Victim. Is it The Da Vinci Code? <laughs> no, it's like called The Last Victim. Sassy. Robert. <laughs> oh. Where are you? Oh, no. <laughs> I think Sarah's ghost just got human clean, but we also have, he thank you so much for calling and talking about uh, the Da Vinci Code. <laughs> <laughs> Um, which is a great book. I, I yeah. like those very much. I've heard good things. Yeah. Uh, and I, obviously we all love uh, Tom. I, <laughs> we have Mary in Cleveland. Hi. Hi. Hi, uh, this is the ghost of Karen's virginity. <laughs> very, very edgy. <laughs> A barn is having none of it. <laughs> no. I want to see where it goes. Who okay. Did, yeah, who did Karen lose her virginity to? Yeah. Um, a ghost. <laughs> a criminal ghost? Maybe. Could you tell us about it? Um, they went out and did some crimes. <laughs> and then they died. I meant the sex part. <laughs> <laughs> It was very foggy. <laughs> soggy, soggy or foggy? Soggy. Both. Yeah. Soggy from the fog. <laughs> I got them soggy panties. <laughs> Just real misty. <laughs> I feel like if you lost your virginity to a ghost, then probably maybe emotionally you lost it. But physically, my guess is that the hymen would still be intact. Yeah. Unless you were a, a big horseback rider. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if anybody I feel like has... it would just be like you feel the void. I don't know. Ooh. Mm. This has very deep, this <laughs> yeah. is like a Depeche Mode song. Um, we, we can never fill our voids. Uh, well, uh, thank you for calling in Karen's virginity. Ghost virginity. <laughs> we have Harry on from Boston on line one. Hey, what's going on? Hey. Is everyone doing voices? Uh, yeah. No, I think that's his voice. Oh. <laughs> Damn. You just make me... <laughs> that's just his voice. No, I, 
I said, that's his voice. I didn't say just. <laughs> What's up, Harry? Uh, not much. I'm going to be honest. Uh, I read the Goodread description. <laughs> uh, it looks pretty cool, though. <laughs> hey, thank you, Harry. I feel like the Goodread description counts. Yeah. It's pretty long, to be honest. <laughs> it's a lot. How long is the good read description? Did you have to scroll? I had to scroll a little bit. It was definitely at least one scroll. <laughs> Sounds like me in college. <laughs> I read the description. <laughs> Yeah, they didn't do Cliff's notes for the last victim. Yeah. So. <laughs> I could do Cliff notes for Karen. You could. Yeah. You should. I'm sure you, she I would them. read the Cliff notes for sure. <laughs> Thank you, if Harry. If you put them out on like Twitter or something. <laughs> Why can't I just summarize somebody else's book on Twitter? They'd be like, okay, be the, you need your own if you career. Did that, that'd be good. <laughs> I think that'd be a fun thing to do. <laughs> Thank you, Harry, for yeah, participating. No <laughs> Oh, we lost him. Oh, we have Matt Max from Pittsburgh. <laughs> Hi. Hi. What's up, uh, Max? So full disclosure, I haven't read the book. Oh my God! Get, get out of here. I know. I'm sorry. But okay. So the the problem that I'm having is <laughs> like a suspension of disbelief. Okay. Right. So I can picture what part? Ghost That's what fine. part do you find not believable? <laughs> the part that you haven't okay, read. but he's he's a Criminal profiler, right? Shouldn't she she know not to fuck a serial killer? Yeah, we she all couldn't help herself. Yeah. 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 He, he was, was hung. He was yeah. hung. Yeah. He was so he hot. Was hung. And he was like, hey, I could protect you, sort of. Like, he just was being, he was there. He was physically around for a long time, and that's all it takes, apparently. No, no. <laughs> I actually, I think you brought up a great point, Max in Pittsburgh. I think it's, I just want to bring up a quote. This is really, because <laughs> yeah. he sees her for who she is, because they're stuck together, um, physically. And so she sees ghosts, right? And no, she's never been able to share it with anybody mm -hmm. because people think she's crazy. And so let's do up page 297. I'm glad you brought this up, Max. <laughs> Why would she fall for him? Here's the example. I don't know if we want to read this. I've, I'll read it. This is in his voice. Uh, you're something, Doc. You know that? that He's talking about all the things that she has to go through. That kind of experience would turn most people into basket cases. But you, look at you. Dr. Charlotte Stone, right after they took me in to see you and I discovered to my amazement that you were hot. <laughs> I, looked up, I looked up all your degrees and credentials because he does his research. Just to make sure I was getting quality service. And I got to tell you, they impressed the hell out of me. Now they impress me even more. You took what happened to you and you used to make it something out of yourself. You should be proud, he said, sounding uncharacteristically serious. His words, <laughs> made what almost felt like a lump rise in her throat. Charlie realized that this was the first time anyone had ever recognized and acknowledged what she had done, and for some idiotic, ridiculous reason, it touched her to the core. Mm -hmm. But do you see, like, that serial killers don't feel empathy? That's their whole thing. Yeah, that's why the whole thing is probably he's been wrongly accused. <laughs> is that a major plot point? Yeah, it's a major plot point. It's oh, like, well, okay. it's a three it's plot point. Yeah. He says it. Oh, that's why there's ghost court. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't get to read all of them. <laughs> yeah, they also think it's just like, okay, yeah, like they don't have like empathy, but every woman thinks a man does something and they're like, oh, I'm the one. I'm the one that changed him. Yeah. And this is her, I'm the one moment that she thinks she's special, <laughs> but he's just lying. She's literally like, I'm, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> she's like, I'm going to change him from ghost to, to human. human. <laughs> yeah. All yeah. of the above. Yeah. Do you really yes. think he describes every murderer as good looking? <laughs> most of them are. I mean, most murderers are good looking. Are they? Dahmer, Robert Ramirez. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, I mean, the ones that. Matter. <laughs> <laughs> the hits. Yeah, the Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, that's in the next book. There is an sorry, ugly murderer yeah. in the next Robert book. Robert uh, Something Ramirez, yeah. You know, the dating day one. He's hot. Yeah. I feel like both Grin and I have issues. We're like, <laughs> oh, these are all the attractive murderers. But, I mean, that's how they people trust them. Right. 
Yeah. Because they're charming. Mm -hmm. And then the one guy, we didn't talk about the extensive plastic surgery. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, I will. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> I was a ghost. <laughs> Which extensive plastic surgery? The guy, the guy at the end. The, uh, the painting. Oh, original. yes. And that's why the they were like, OG. oh, that's what she felt better about yes. not recognizing. Yeah. Yeah. Because he had, yes. Yeah. Well, he was in an accident. Well, she had, the, the woman had witnessed a murder as a child, and that's how she became interested in being a forensic psychologist. Yeah, that's yeah. why Michael realized she went through all that, and he was like, you're a tough cookie. <laughs> she saw her best friend get, well, I shouldn't give it all away. No, you should give it all away. Uh, yeah, the yeah. other time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, were they best friends? Because the way they set it up is they weren't that close. <laughs> well, yeah. well, the, the, was like a popular the, girl. the cool hot yeah. chick got murdered. Yeah. 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 And she was at her house when it happened. But I feel like they describe. Uh, uh, and... <laughs> 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 so alarming every time. <laughs> oh my god, that flew so fast. <laughs> um, so we're gonna take a, a hot minute. Actually, this is the perfect moment because we're discussing how it's all these men that are violent. Mm -hmm. And I do, every time, I love serial killer books. Um, and I love Mindhunter, and you know, it's out right now, and then you, you, right, so good. Um, I just finished it, and so good. And they're always men, the serial killers. And you're like, fucking women, we should step it up a little bit, you know what I mean? It's like, I mean, I do think there are women serial killers who are probably not getting caught. Um, and we clean up, but I, there are like five famous female serial killers, and every time they were like, pushed to it because men drove them crazy, which I think is so, you know, sad. I think it would be nice if we just had a lady murderer, but she was just born gifted, you know what I mean? <laughs> We're like, oh my God, is that a half shirt made out of ears? That is so cute. <laughs> Can I get that on Etsy? <laughs> um, so in the vein of just, you know, having violent characters who are also uh, lovely. Um, but, you know, not because they have some wild backstory. Uh, Kendra and I wrote a will-be series that is currently a, a short called The Dawns, and Corinne directed it. And it is going to be screened at the Broad Humor Film Festival in Los Angeles on Labor Day weekend with the Saturday night slot. Woo, woo! Yeah. Nice. Oh, yeah. And we are going to premiere it here for you guys tonight. Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! Vic, who did that to your face? Dons. Like Mafia Dons? No, the Dons. Don O'Hara and Don DeLuca. They run a couple of blocks around here doing low-level mob shit, but the big bosses don't take them serious. So, two girls, both named Dawn, beat you up? Yeah. <laughs> Good for them. The Dawn's going to be at the Broad Humor Film Festival Labor Day weekend. Kendra also has another piece at the festival as well. So it's going to be two pieces. Two pieces. <laughs> <laughs> two pieces, one festival. <laughs> it's <getting this> porn. <laughs> and we also have three and a half extra minutes to any closing thoughts on the book. I want to say thank you up top because this has been my dream night to talk about <laughs> ghost sex and serial killers. Honestly, it is. Ah, I'm wild with joy, and um, I would love if you guys. Uh, I would just say that I, I would watch the movie um, <laughs> if it was ever made into something visual. I think there should be an app for ghosts. I feel like that should be like a thing. <laughs> like to, to like date, a, yeah, to like, like, yeah, yeah. Okay. Tinder ghosts, ghost Tinder. Oh, just that's a good. That's a good concept. Tell Karen to put it in the next book. <laughs> Karen, yeah. they want to do an app, ghost app. We have one more call. Did you? If I didn't oh. want to cut you off, you want you wanted. Oh, I just. I was gonna just actually. My ending theme is gonna be a quote uh, from Karen Robards uh, from the last victim. Yes. Uh, so she'd seen a ghost, and now she wanted to hurl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought that was an interesting choice that she used also the same 
uh, word for throw up that they use in Wayne's World. <laughs> oh, Karen is so real. She's so real. She's very relatable. Yeah. I didn't read the fuck quote to you guys. He, she says, I'm going to fuck you uh, to bet. Do you remember that quote? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I had to put the book down. <laughs> like, my seat got wet on the subway. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> she. She has interesting phrasings for things, and you mentioned the dollars to donuts thing. She also says turning her on to the her back teeth. Yes, a lot of teeth. Is this a, have you guys ever I been never turned heard on to your back teeth? I don't even know what that means. Oh, I thought that was more of like a how not to give a blow job. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, she does. She says, and then in other books she says eye teeth, your eye teeth. So I I looked them both up. Um, <laughs> your eye teeth. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> but you can tell she does want to be, she's like an aspiring comic because she works in rules of threes a lot, which I noticed. Like one of my favorite uh, choices of hers was uh, when she was explaining um, a, a body and she said, covered in blood, smeared in blood, smothered in blood. <laughs> <laughs> Just <to> really, <laughs> I got it. Yeah. <laughs> rules of threes yeah. in comedy is you do one, two, and then the wild one. So Karen is <laughs> popping it out. <laughs> My favorite part was where when the hot ghost quoted Shakespeare, <laughs> and then she was surprised, and then he said, I know I can read, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Does it all. They really do have a fun banter. I will say that much. I like the, the d dynamic between them. I, I would be attracted to a man who spoke to me that way. <laughs> yeah. I would. I think he's clever. <laughs> you're right, and that's why you believe in his innocence. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's why you believe. Yeah, you're the only one. They never really say exactly what he's done. I mean, no. they don't give a description of the actual crimes. They just say that he killed people. Except they for his dad. Oh yeah, yeah, they. Oh my God! Thank you guys so much.